Transmitting to you from Old Heart Radio. Gentlemen, that's right. This is another episode of Coffee and Contemplation. I'm your host, Old Heart. Generally appropriate. Uh, I'm here today to try to ripen up my coconut. I'm trying to ripen up yours as well, dear listener, if you are listening. If you're not, then you're not ripening up your coconut with me. You're ripening up your coconut against me. (laughs) I don't know what that fucking means. Either way, uh, today we are talking about a little movie from 1989 titled Gleaming the Cube. If you don't know what that means, that's okay. I don't fully know what it means either. I don't even know if the main character, Brian, knows what it means. Excuse me, but maybe this helps. When I say different, I mean different. Brian, gleam the cube. You gleam the cube. You're in worse shape than I thought. Brian, it's a place that you skate when you let go. Hmm. Don't worry. It's an intangible. It's not intended so the people don't grasp it, so I guess you're safe for now. I don't know. Maybe I don't, I don't want to be different. It's not optional. Okay, so, just right out the bat, gleaming the cube doesn't sound like something you want to be doing necessarily. It's not optional, apparently. You, uh, you just all of a sudden are. It also kind of reminds me of sort of like I uh, these the, the the movie Footloose. There's a, uh, Kevin Bacon has a, the famous like punch dancing uh, warehouse dancing scene. There's a scene where where the main character Brian in Gleaming the Cube goes on this like crazy warehouse skate fucking scene. And uh, I think that might might have been him gleaming, and I think that I think that Kevin Bacon might have been gleaming as well in his movie, maybe maybe ahead of his time. I'm not really sure. Just setting setting that aside. So, gleaming the cube. Like I said, it's a movie from 1989. 1989, huh? Starring, uh, well, freaking what's his fucking what's his fucking face? Christian Slater. That's right. Christian Slater, who later on would go to, go on to do great great works on such movies as uh, Heather's. I would say that's mostly Winona Ryder, though. <laughs> Either way, so uh, it's a 21st Century Fox movie. It was released January 13th in the year of your Lord, 1989. It's 100 minutes long, and it definitely tanked at the box office. The budget for the movie was 10 million dollars. That they ended up. Uh, raking back in two million seven hundred seventy-seven thousand and two hundred eighty dollars. So, I would say not a good uh, uh, reception. So the plot of the movie is so great, though. The plot of the movie, uh, the, the, the Christian Slater plays Brian Kelly, uh, by definition, an underachieving high school student in Orange County, California. Uh, he's an avid skateboarder. He really likes to skate. Although most of the shots in the movie, you don't see him skating. You see people in wigs that look like him skating, including Tony Hawk. So I, <laughs> which is which is a whole different thing. I think Tony Hawk himself is my favorite character in this movie. <laughs> but uh, so okay, so Brian Kelly, an avid uh, avid skateboarder, who is like constantly at odd uh, at odds with his parents. Uh, finds that his Vietnamese brother, Vin, V-I-N-H, uh, is dead. He dies. He dies under mysterious circumstances, right? Vin, uh, works as a, as a shipping clerk for the Vietnamese Anti-Communist Relief Fund, the V-A-C-R-F, an organization which sends medical supplies to Vietnam. Uh, when Vin discovers a suspicious inaccuracy in the shipping records, his boss basically ends up having him fucking kill. 
All right, kind of by accident, it's like this really weird set of circumstances. So like, so so they suspect him, but they don't really know. So they basically kidnap Vin, and they're holding him in a hotel room, like they like strangling him and like being like, "Where? Who are you working for?" and kind of shit like that. And and they find out he doesn't know anything, right? He's like, no, and they're like, okay, no, no, no. Like, we'll just go in there and we'll tell him everything's cool. It was a mistake. We thought uh, he was somebody else. And <laughs> which, there's no reality that the kid would just be like, cool, yeah, no, I'm not going to tell anybody that you guys almost fucking murdered me over some bullshit, some actual illegal activity. Uh, anyway, so Vin ends up getting getting killed, right? So then Brian is just tore the fuck up about it. Uh, although he shows up to the funeral <laughs> in this really dramatic scene, Christian Slater like walks up in this like he's in a super cool like you know like early early uh, late eighties uh, fucking funeral gear. He's like I'm a skateboarder and I'm gonna be punk as fuck and still look like I'm sad. And he walks up and places this chess piece down on on Vin's fucking coffin at his funeral. Right? And he's like. You know, he's like, you made the final move, motherfucker. Uh, he doesn't say that, but 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 they're playing uh, earlier, early, briefly earlier in the movie. They're they're seen playing this ongoing game of chess. So he's like, you your move, you know, basically. Uh, really, really touching. So either way, so Brian goes on this like tear where he's like, I don't know what to do. Who am I? And he decides to secretly oh shit shout outs shout outs to uh evil l shout outs to yeah yeah uh uncaged castle roll lunar six harrison hannon uh bugatron you know uh yellow teeth uh i don't know who's listening out there i really don't know if you're listening uh get on the instagram and uh like a uh, follow us and or or follow us on the twitter and shout us out you know it's like old heart radio on the instagram old heart in space on twitter Either way, neither of those are very rarely, they're, they're, they're very rarely used. So I promise to get better about that. I, I've been saying that for like two years. I promise. I promise. promise. Oh my gosh, all that coffee is starting to make me talk faster. I swear. Uh, let's have a little more though. Okay, so gleaming the cube. Again, I don't know what it means. Uh, all I know is that Brian is a really shitty investigator and he keeps kind of just getting in the way of the actual investigation which is strange strange as fuck and at one point he kind of like takes on this like more like he he starts becoming a sort of like a more more traditional like rich Californian Uh, he looks like he was wearing polos again he's not like skating with his friends he's he's good he's a good Brian after a while he's it's just a really shitty movie I gotta be honest and at one point they kind of allude to the fact that Vin, the Vietnamese, the adopted Vietnamese brother of Christian Slater, is paying rent and bills to, like, their parents for living at home, which seems so kind of backwards to me. Like, did this family adopt a small Vietnamese child so they could, like, eventually make it, like, prof- make profit off of it? Him? Not it? I don't know. These questions need answering. Kind of like, what the fuck does Gleaming the Cube mean? I don't know. All I know is that there's a lot of like random, random skateboarding. I actually kind of like the early, I, the early styling of skateboarding, like the early tricks. Uh, I, I, I like the the kind of more like cruise oriented, like like ground ground based tricks. Uh, <laughs> does that make me afraid to ollie? No. Uh, I will try to ollie. I'll probably fall on my ass. But either way, we're not talking about me skateboarding. Uh, I want to talk about Tony Hawk skateboarding in the movie, though. He is featured as one of Brian's skateboarding friends throughout the movie, right? Uh, But he's also featured at a few different points, like, as a fill-in for Christian Slater. Because obviously Christian Slater cannot skate as well as his character, Brian, in this movie. Um, so several times throughout the movie, you see other people skating in his place, you know, with like the kind of the costume change and maybe like a wig on, you know, like it kind of, like they do a good job at, or they try to do a good job of covering it up. But realistically, uh, you definitely see Tony Hawk at least once in this movie skating as Brian and then later on skating as his friend, 
and then later on, you and then at one point in the movie, you even see uh, a Tony Hawk like sticker, like for so it's like Tony Hawk Inception. You see, he he's like in the universe. <laughs> He's in the gleaming the cube universe <laughs> as as Tony Hawk somewhere out there. He's also Brian's friend, played by Tony Hawk. And he's also Tony Hawk the skater playing Brian. It's fucking insane. And that's why I think Tony Hawk is my favorite part of this movie. It's just the truth. And the truth is out there. Uh, shout outs. This last week was, uh, I believe, the pre- this week... Uh, in time X-Files premiered at some point. Also, there's just recently a Friday the 13th that I totally missed, so shout out to that. Um, so, as always, I, you know, don't want to leave my coconut completely unripe, even though this movie probably left me with more questions than answers. Um, and this podcast probably left you, if you're out there listening, uh, with more uh, questions than answers as well, which is fine. That's fine. Questions are good. Um, but I just needed to look up. I, I was like, what the hell does Gleaming the Cube mean? Because I still don't know after this movie. I still don't know what Gleaming the Cube is. So I naturally Googled it. I actually, let's just do it. Let's do it right now. Hey, Siri. What does Gleaming the Cube mean? Check it out. I fucking hate you, Siri. Uh, Gleaming the Cube. The first thing that pops up is Urban Dictionary. So naturally, let's just let's just hit it. Uh, Urban Dictionary. Top definition. N- n- numero uno. Uh, to push yourself to dangerous new limits, hence being outside of the cube and able to polish it, creating the gleaming effect. That definitely, I guess, makes sense. Pushing yourself to dangerous new limits, hence being outside of the cube and able to polish it. So fucking crazy. Uh, the second definition, let's see what that is. Uh, gleaming the cube. When a girl rubs her pussy on a man's bald head. Okay. Uh, definition number three. To fail so badly that there is a brilliance in the failure. Uh, <laughs> I don't know if I, I think the first one works. I don't know. I don't know. I, I don't. I I have long, flowing, luscious hair, so I don't know anything about gleaming the cube, personal in my personal life. But either way, I really hope that you enjoyed this episode of Coffee and Contemplation, one of our Old Heart Radio podcasts. Uh, you know, Old Heart Radio. It's a weird, shifting thing, but we're out there. <laughs> what is happening? Either way, I'm just gonna end this podcast. Uh, go out there, use your brain for good. Because every day is a good day to ripen up that coconut. And, you know, every day is also a good day to gleam the cube. But most importantly, just remember to keep your stick on the ice. <laughs> <laughs>